Hi, I'm Nora St. John, the Education Program Director for Balanced Body, and I'm here today to introduce you to the Anatomy Plus Movement Skeleton. We're going to go through how to put it together, we're going to go through a little bit of how to work with the clay and the templates, and how the manual can help you to build anatomy in three dimensions on your own. So, here we go. I've taken everything out of the box. We've got the base. We have a right leg and a left leg, a right arm and a left arm, our torso, the head can go back on. And then we also have all the hardware that goes with that. So we have a little Allen key, which you're going to use to attach the hips into the pelvis. And then we have some wing nuts, which are going to attach the feet onto the base. So here is our base. It's got three little holes. So what we're going to do is we're going to first put our rod into the base. And from there, I take the big wing nut and I just put it on there. Voila, voila, voila. It doesn't have to be too tight yet. You're going to be adjusting a little bit in terms of height, so just, you know, just gently finger tight is good. Then we're going to put on the two legs. So here we have, it's always good to check, this would be the right leg because the big toe is on the inside. So there's my right leg, it's going to go right there. My left leg, big toe's on the inside on this side. My left leg matches my feet, it's going to go right there. Turn that upside down. When I put on my, uh, my washer and um, my wing nuts, I want to have it so that uh, it's, it's bubbled up, so that it's going up towards the base, and that will give you a little more of um, a tighter uh, fit once you screw the wing nut on. So I would go do 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 do. Once again, I'm not going to tighten these down too much to start, then I'll adjust them as I go here. Okay, so now you've got your feet and your rod on the bottom, and they're, you know, moderately tight. Now I'm going to put my hips into my torso. You can put this on first, that's a possibility, or put the legs into this first. Um, but when you do, it just gives you kind of this long thing that's harder to work with. So now I'm going to put my torso down onto the rod, and then my femurs are going to put, go into my acetabulum. Acetabuli, I suppose if it's plural. And then here I've got this other little nut that I've got going on here. And this is going to go into the holes in the pelvis. Give them a little finger tightened to start. Then you're going to use your Allen key and screw them in. These you want to screw in pretty tight. So these guys you want to make sure are tight enough so that those legs aren't going to get wobbly on you and the torso is nice and steady. Again, though, um, I'm, talking, I'm talking strong girl tight. I'm not talking strong boy tight, because sometimes you can really screw these down, and it's hard to get them undone. You can you know, damage the mechanisms a little bit if you over-tighten them. So again, tight, but not like uh, crank down tight. Put that guy in a little screw. Voila, voila. There we go. OK. Now, I'm pretty solid everywhere, yeah? Pretty, pretty solid. So what I can do, if, if you're feeling like this guy's a little too top heavy, you have the option of putting this metal base on. This is an extra accessory. And this metal base would simply go on the bottom. I'm not going to put it on now, but it would simply go on the bottom over those bolts. And what you'll see is that this uh, big wing nut on the rod will hold that base in. Okay, so it's an option. And it's nice if you're teaching a class to have your guy be a little bit more stable because you'll be moving him around a lot. Okay, so here we go. Now we've got our head, our torso, our legs. The arms are really super simple. Once again, you have to get the right side on the right side. We've got our one side and our other side. These are put on by magnets. So just so you can see that there's a little hole, a little indent there that has a magnet in it. And this guy's got a magnet on the back side. And that just goes right like that. So now our skeleton is put together. Super simple. We've got our skeleton built. Now we're going to look at how to work with the clay and how to use the tools that come in your Anatomy Plus Movement Toolkit. So here we have our nice bag to store them. Basic rolling pin. And then a few more critical things. So we've got a scraper in case your clay gets stuck to your board. We've got a nice little wooden tool, which is nice for 
cutting things out, for carving, for making shapes. And we have a wire tool, which is another way to cut things out or to create um, grooves or the contours of some of the muscles that you might see in some of our other skeletons. We also have a cutting board. Um, this is a perfectly fine cutting board. Uh, these guys are all going to come to the side. Now, the clay will come in big, big bricks or big cubes, uh, big, big oblongs, and you're going to basically take them and just start to work them with your hands. If the clay is particularly stiff when you start with it, it's just because it's cold and it will warm up as you work it. If you live in a cold environment, thinking you know Minnesota in December, uh, you might need to work it more with your hands uh, to really warm it up, or some people even like wrap it in a, a nice, uh, like almost a, a hot pad or a heating plate, um, just to give it a little bit more warmth. Um, if you live in a really warm climate, I'm thinking Singapore or you know somewhere tropical, Brazil, uh, you may need to actually keep the clay cool. So sometimes I'll have just some uh, cold water uh, in a in a bowl, and I'll have this in a plastic bag, and I'll put it into the bowl to just to chill it up a little bit. Now I'm going to start with rolling out a sheet. Now I've already, of course, flattened this a bunch with my fingers, which is very helpful. If any of you have ever made pie dough before, this is, this is all about pie dough. So we make a nice disc, and then take in the rolling pin, roll it a few times, pick it up, turn it about 90 degrees, roll it again. Now. The critical thing there is to pick it up and turn it over, okay? If you don't do that, especially if you're in a hot climate, you will find that you will start to stick to your board, okay? You don't want to do that. So, you know, you'll, you'll learn the temperature and the texture of where you are and what you need to do, but give yourself a little chance. Just roll it three or four times, coming out, and you want to really push it out, right? So you're trying to flatten it out, I'm trying to push the clay in front of me, push the clay out away from me, yeah? And you'll find too that this, the shape will change as you go, so you may start to discover that you're making it oblong and you need to do more in one direction or another. Now, if it does start to stick, that's what your scraper is for. So if it gets really sticky, you do a little thing and it comes off, or if you've really scraped it, you can go through and really get a nice, um, clean it up off the board. So there is one of our major shapes, which we're going to be using a lot of as we build, which is a sheet. Now, as you go through the manual, you'll find that um, there's little notations by each muscle that say S, which would be sheet, or TS, which is thick sheet. Some of your muscles you don't want to make a skinny sheet for. Quadriceps or the skinny sheet, not so good. You want some nice power there. So there's some options there in terms of how, you, how thick you make your, your sheet. Another shape we'll use a lot is a tube, yeah, basic spaghetti. So here again, I, I either just roll it with my hands up in the air like this, or put it down and roll it this way. Now what you'll notice is my fingers are starting close together and they're working themselves apart. So I'm trying to stretch out the clay to create a little more length. And you just, you know, again, you just keep working that till the, you want the correct size that you need for your piece you're building. Now, sometimes you're actually going to want to just take this and shape it to the place you're going to put it. For example, when we build our uh, iliacus, it just goes inside here and then a long tendon comes across the front of the hip. So there you might just want to take your clay and shape it to match. Okay? That's entirely up to you. Now, you've got some shapes here. You've got a tube. You've got a sheet. What do you do with that? This is where your anatomy plus movement manual comes in very handy. In here, we have given you pretty much everything you need to do this on your own. Here, this is one page, here this is our deep anterior hip. You'll notice that there's a template that shows our quadricep muscles, our vastus intermedius, medialis, lateralis, our rectus femoris, and our sartorius. And these guys you'll build as sheets, these you'll build as tubes. So what I'm going to do here is I've got my little template going right here. And the easiest way to use the template is to make a sheet of clay. I make a little bit of a thick sheet, although these are still skinnier than I like. And I simply put the template over the clay. And then I take my wooden tool, I prefer for this one, and I simply dig in to my template so that I'm imprinting the shape of the template 
onto the clay that's underneath it. Okay. Now, all of these shapes are rough. Yeah, none of them are going to be exactly matching your particular skeleton because you may be building it bigger, you may be building it smaller, your sheets may be thicker or thinner. So know that all of these are going to need to be shaped and tailored, if you will, uh, to your actual skeleton, especially once you start putting the second and third layer of muscles on. They're all going to be a little bit different shape and size. So again, we've given you a good place to start so that you don't have to um, shape everything to the skeleton. Um, and here we go. So there's our vastus intermedius, so one of our deep quad muscles. Now I'm going to put this on just so you see how that goes. The attachment points here, uh, and there's different ways to do this. I'm going to do this on the left leg. This is built in on the left side. This is our patellar tendon, our patellar tendon and then our patellar ligament, depending how you break that up. The vastus intermedius goes on there, and it basically covers the shaft of the femur. Do, 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 do. So I'm going to just wrap it around. It goes all the way up to the top. It doesn't cover up the lesser trochanter, this little bump, or the greater trochanter. And it wraps around the femur, like a little blanket. Now, what you probably also know is you have a wonderful video that goes through this entire build one muscle at a time, shows you how to shape it and where you're going to put it and how it goes with the muscles that are related to it. So as long with your uh, manual, you also have a wonderful video that you can just, you know, slowly fast forward through and it'll take you through the build of every muscle, at least every muscle so far from the elbows to the knees, which is what this manual covers. All right, so now you've got your vastus intermedius in place. Now if I want to, if I want to be a little more artistic about it, I can take my wire tool and these fibers are going to go kind of like this. So these fibers go down towards the knee. Call them valley fibers as opposed to mountain fibers. Yeah, and I can draw those. But, you know, I may want to indicate where these fibers are going and how this is actually connecting into the patellar tendon. For that, I like to use an alternative colored clay. Like, for example, white. So here we go. Just taking a little bit of an alternative colored clay. This would be our connective tissue colored clay. This time I'm going to do a little different tube, okay? So I've got a tube going, um, and I'm going to make it really skinny. And now I'm going to flatten it out. So this is an FT, which you'll see some in your manual as a flat tube. So I've got a little flat tube. It's going to go like that and like that. And there we have it. You've now built the vastus intermedius. Now that you've done your building for the day, another important thing is how do you clean all this up, okay? So a couple things. First of all, it's very sad when you have to take your muscles off. I just want you to know that. It's always like, but I built him and now he's going away. So just take the clay off. Um, it may leave, depending on how long it's been on there and how much you've been smooshing it, it may leave a little residue. I take either your little paper towel is really a good way to do this, or you can use some of the wet wipes just to get rid of whatever clay's on there. Speaking of paper towels, if you're going to go wash your hands, first you want to wipe it off as best you can with a paper towel um, and then go wash it. Otherwise, you're going to end up with wet, so soapy mud that doesn't really come off your hands. Okay? So wipe yourself off best you can with paper first and then do um, your washing up. You can roll your clay up into little balls if you like, just for be ready for the next day or whatever else you're going to be building. Um, the clay is oil-based, so it will last forever. It doesn't have to be put away. It's not going to dry up. Uh, you do need to store it in plastic. So a nice thick Ziploc bag works really, really well for that. You also don't want to store it in a very, very hot or a very, very cold place. So, you know, room temperature is probably your best bet on that. Um, again, I like to turn them into just nice little balls so that they're a good, easy shape to work with. And then with your cutting board, this is not particularly dirty, but you will find it can get pretty funky. You can take your scraper, give it a good scrape, Take a little wipe, like so. Wipe off your tools. One other thing about the clay that we use, it is a plastilina. It is a non-toxic modeling clay. Uh, it's used a lot in claymation. So yes, you can eat it. I wouldn't recommend it. It's really just dirt and oil, but um, it is non-toxic. So there you go. You can put all your tools back in your toolkit. Boink, boink. And you are ready for your next build.